I don't, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. This is crazy. It's our business. It's nuts. R will eat my soul and spit it out after breakfast or something. Okay, I'm supposed to open this. That's my data. What is what is what is that even? That that's like Excel. Okay, okay, I understand Excel. I'm supposed to do like the pay thing because it's supposed to be like teachers pay in these different parts of the country. Okay, I think I can do that. Um, that's Excel. All right. Uh, okay, I can do that. And I'm supposed to look at something on Dr. Rogers' website. Let's see. DarrenLRogers.com slash static slash data. But, okay. Um, what am I supposed to look at? I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to look at this business here, this supportdata.csv. Okay. Okay, I can probably do this. This, this is going to work for me. All right. Now, let's... Uh, R. What am I supposed to do with R? Here's a blue thing. I should I should double click it. I should open it up. Okay, try that. I double click it, and oh, it opened up my other monitor. Okay, okay. Here's the monitor. Oh, there it is. Check it out. Looks like R. It's very confusing, but I need R Commander. Well, R Commander. Getting it started can sometimes be a pain. You need to install it first. So I need to do this command: install dot packages. And in between those quotation marks, I'm going to type something in quotes. I have to type the name of the R Commander package. It has to be all perfectly capital, lowercase, capital R, lowercase, C-M-D-R. And if you don't know that, you can Google it and figure out what the name of the package is. Now, I could just do this and hit enter, but I'm going to make it make absolutely sure it goes right. And I'm going to enter this extra thing, which is called an argument, and that's dependencies equals true. And what that means is, I'll download R Commander, but I'll also download all the little things R Commander needs to run so that it doesn't tell me that it's missing some important component or something like that. Actually, there's lots of abbreviations. So if I want to type less, I can do capital T. Notice there's no quotation marks around true. True or capital T and false and capital F in R, they're like special uh, things. They're basically the numbers one and zero. They're Boolean values. So I'm going to hit enter here. Oh, it's going to be installing this, and I have to select a library, or oh, sorry, a CRAN mirror. In other words, where am I going to download this from? Do I want to download it from Lanzhou, China, and from Xiamen, China, from Bogota, Colombia? All those will work, but they'll take a really long time, uh, or, I don't know, maybe an extra 30 seconds. What if I choose Pennsylvania? All right, I'll try that. And then some stuff will happen, and things will download. Do, 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 do. All right, yours will take longer uh, because you have to download lots and lots and lots of pieces of things. I've downloaded R Commander before, so a lot of those pieces are already on my computer. Now, R Commander isn't started, as you might have noticed, so I have to start it with another command. And so every time you start R Commander from now on, you have to start up R by clicking on the big blue R. And then to start our commander, you do this command called library. Library, which it's crazy. I don't know what it even means. It just means load up all these functions so that I can use them or start our commander. I could put quotation marks around our commander and it would still work, I think. But you don't need to, so why bother? Can you install packages? You have to. There's a reason. If you're really interested, someday I can explain it to you, but it's a very boring reason. But now you don't need it. So I'm going to start it here. And we've got our commander. Let's minimize this while we wait. All right, so here's our commander. I got it started. Now, if you can't get this far, if it hangs, if it doesn't install right, if it says there's some piece that's missing that it can't install and copy the package from the temporary directory, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Come see me, I'll try and help you out. In the meantime, use SPSS. Uh, but I'll try and help you out also in office hours or other time allocated to that, I can give some time to help you work on things, or you can work on the computers that have R on them on campus. <clears throat> oh, I need to get some data in here. Dr. Roger said I'm supposed to get this data in here. It's supposed to be like, okay, so data, probably import. Yeah, it's gonna be like this thing I downloaded and I put it on my hard drive, so I'm gonna do that. Now, the little 
litany that comes up. Um, I'm just going to call it, I don't know, k.1, because I'll be loading lots of things into memory here, maybe. I don't know. You can leave this stuff the same. Variable names, yes, they are in the file. I should, should have set them up. Missing data indicator, you can leave that alone. A local file system means I'm going to look on my hard drive. Clipboard means I'm going to just, I've just copied some stuff from Excel or something, and it'll just take whatever I copied and make a data set out of it. That's kind of fun. Um, local file system, internet URL, I can just put in a URL of where a file is, and I'll show you how to do that. Anyway, I'm going to do local file system. Now, field separator, a CSV file stands for comma separated values, and a comma is what separates the fields. Don't do the comma here, though, because this is saying, hey, are you in Great Britain, and you use commas instead of decimal places, matey, or whatever they say over there. We're not in Great Britain. We use periods. So the field separator, this is what tells the computer when you're done with one cell and you're in the next cell. It's weird, but that's how it works. So I'm going to click OK. Now, this doesn't always work, but let's just see. Uh, I'm gonna, there we go. It pops up my little browser window. I'm going to look in. I have my data sets on Dropbox here. Current, psych stats, my data sets, they're all in here. Let's pick a nice one. Um, knowledge and Attitudes 2011. Now, there's an SAV. I don't want to do that because I didn't say I'm going to import an SAV file. XLSX, I didn't do that. We totally can import Excel files, no problem. But I didn't tell it Excel. I told it text or something like that. So um, text or CSV. So I'm going to get the CSV file. Now we know it worked. Let me get this up here. Because it says the data set, and it has the name I gave it, data one, has 270 rows and 121 columns. That looks pretty good. You don't want like one row, 238 columns, or... 65 rows in one column. Anyway, you look at the data set. See this new data set? Let's look at it. Um, it keeps popping it up on my other window. Anyway, yeah, okay. It's really an ugly data set viewer, but there it is. There's my data set. It looks like a matrix. It's got the same kinds of values in each row and col or in each column, a bunch of different rows. Okay, here's the data set. I can close this. Um, this R console is still running. I can just minimize it and get it out of the way. I can use it too if I want to. So uh, I want to do something to that. So I want to. Well, let's let's see which variable was I supposed to use. I don't even remember what a duct director is telling me to do. Not ERP code. That looks pretty crazy. Not form number. Not age. Poly. He told me to use this one called vs.f, and I looked in the code book and I totally know what it means. So vs.f. All right, that's the one I'm going to use. Now I probably have to close this before I can do anything. R commander will freeze up while you're looking at the data. It's weird. R does amazing things in like every way, but SPSS is way better for just helping you kind of look at your data in a nice spreadsheet. SPSS wins on that count. So, graphs. Uh, you should look at a histogram. You should always look at a histogram first. And let's see my histogram. This is the thing that popped up. VS.F, is it, is it going to help me here? Oh, it's in alphabetical order. So even, okay, there we go. It's not helpful. VS.F. Let's see. There we go. VS.F. So, okay. And ta-da! There's my histogram. Not terribly normal looking. It's pretty ugly. It's looking mighty hideous. Yeah, so it's pretty ugly. If I want to save that, I can just do like five file, save as, and I can save it on my hard drive, or I can copy to the clipboard if I'm going to copy it into Google Documents, I should choose as bitmap. And then I can just paste. I can just do this copy. And now if I switch to a Google Document and click in it somewhere and do paste, like control V, then this graph will appear like amazing magic. So anyway, there's that. Um, I want to do a box plot. Let's do the box plot here. And of course, my dialog boxes are always popping up on my other monitor. VS.F, which one was it? This one. Let's look. And here's my box plot. Yeah, for as bizarre as that was, there's no outliers according to the box plot, so that's fine. Doesn't mean it's normal, it just means there's no outliers. You know it's not normal. I had those pointy spiky things on the end. That's not good. It's not normal. So yeah, it looks okay. Um, if I wanted to get statistics from it, I can do this summaries, numerical summaries business here. And there's another little window that pops up, of course, on my other monitor. And 
Yeah, let me just scroll down here. BS dot F. And this is where the summaries pop up down here. Not pretty. R doesn't go for pretty unless you force it to be pretty. So R is my kind of woman. Mean 5.48, standard deviation 3.13, IQR5. There's the first quartile, 3. There's the third quartile, 8. And there's the maximum and the minimum, 0 and 10. That's kind of nice. And N of 271. That's, that's kind of nice. It has lots of good stuff in it. Now I'm supposed to get some other kind of data. Where am I going to get this kind of data? It's crazy. Um, let's look at this data. Where do I even find this data? What am I, a data ninja that I'm supposed to know how to find data? This is crazy. Who lets these people decide that you need the data? Data is not the devil anyway. All right, let's look at this data. Let's look at um, the DASL educational spending thing. There's a number of ways I can get this. Let's try a clever way. Let's try. What if I save this as an Excel file? I can do that, right? I can do this browse business. So if it's in some weird format and it's not working, Excel works really nicely. Uh, strict open XML spreadsheet. <clears throat> that might be fine. Or just regular Excel workbook. That should be fine. Let's save that. So it's saved. So let me look from in here again. Now I'm going to just get some more data. Import data from Excel file. Oh. And now I've got my little browsy window here. Hey, lectures. So exciting. Uh, let's see, my data sets. And with the DASL business here, educational spending, I'm going to double click that. No. Oh. First you, I must be looking at the wrong window. Oh, yeah, I am. OK. Sorry. This is the window that popped up. I'm going to call that um, data2. Yeah, you have to make sure the variable names are in the first row. That's okay, there we go. Oh, there we go. And let's find it on the hard drive. Current. I think I'm taxing my poor little computer with all these graphics. Data sets. Uh, let's see, there's the Dazzle. There we go. Actually, I think you pronounce it Dazzle with this source where you can get lots of free data. Okay, there we go. I double click that. But Excel can have multiple sheet, multiple worksheets in each workbook, right? Oh, but I guess that only had one. So sometimes a little box pops up and says, which workbook do you want to do? Or which worksheet in the workbook? And you just have to choose. So 51 rows, five columns. I can look at that. See if it looks pretty like I imagine it looking. Um, yeah, it's long and skinny. Not very many variables. It's about 30 rows. Five variables. All right. So I'm still supposed to do this pay thing for my homework. So I'm going to do like graphs and histogram. And I can see that my current data set is data two now. I think it switches automatically for you. Anyway, this dialog popped up. Pay. It only shows me my numerical variables. If it's not showing you the right variables, then maybe you need to go back to the data and tweak them and make sure that there's no, no letters or numbers entered there. So I click OK. There's my histogram. No, it looks like there might be some outlier-y type stuff going on there. What if I wanted to do a different histogram? So let's do a different histogram here. Um, pay and options, number of bins. It says auto. Um, sometimes like 30, 20 or 30 bins is a really nice number. So I'm going to try 25 bins. And boy, that certainly shows me a different view here. Skinnier bins. It had to make them skinnier to give me 25 of them. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of positively skewed. There's a dip in the middle, but it's kind of positively skewed there. Okay, so let's look at a box plot of that one. Box plot, pay, okay. And we've got an outlier, and it's row number 27. Anyway, it's above 40. So here's the top whisker. It's a little below 35, like 34. So let's go into the data. Let's go find that Dazzle data. And it was in Excel, so that's nice. You can just put stuff as Excel, dump it into an Excel worksheet, whatever, uh, if you're having a hard time. So let me just open that Excel spreadsheet. You can use Excel or CSV and organize it as a data matrix. Put the row names, or put the variable names in the first row, and then the other data here, make sure there's no data 
dangling around or the anywhere. So here we go. We've got pay. Now these things. Um, that's my variable pay. I need to get rid of the stuff that was above about a 34, right? Well, I could just hunt, but I can also do this uh, data sort. Excel's really nice. I say my data has headers. If that's not checked, I would check it. So then I can do this sort by pay. Smallest to largest, largest to smallest, doesn't matter. It's sorted smallest to largest, so 18.1. So there we go. There's the largest one. I'm just going to. Alaska. Wow, you get paid pretty. The creatures are compensated well in Alaska. That's really good. So I'm going to delete that. And now I'm going to close this. Yes, I'm going to save it because I just changed it. Now we got back in here, get some data again, import data from Excel. Go find data to A. You can have lots of data sets open, that's fine. Data to A, and I'm going to go find that again. I don't know why I can't remember where I was before. That would be handy, but it's not that smart today. So data sets. I need that Dazzle Excel file. Dazzle. Uh, it was this one. Excel Educational Spending Excel FX. 51 rows. 50 rows. Oh, look. Last time we imported it was 51. Now it only has 50. Well, that's good. So here's the code that we used to make the box plots and all that stuff. That's nice. Not up here. Down here. Output. So now I'm going to do a box plot of pay again. And this time, there probably won't be any outliers. If there are, I'm going to ignore them. You just do this once. If something's horribly skewed, you can just get outliers and outliers and outliers. And every time you move them, there's more. But there we go. It's still skewed, but it's but there's no more outliers. All right, so I'll keep it. That's good. And then I have another one. What is that supposed to be? I don't even know. Is that one? Is that one? I'm just supposed to look at something from the internet. It's stupid. I hate the internet. It just it sucks my life away. Okay, so I'm going to go to Dr. Rogers' website here. Carinellrogers.com slash static slash data for those of you interested. And I'm going to look because uh, I'm going to, yeah, here, here. So let's say I'm looking at support data. Now, here's a clever thing. See, as I mouse over this down in the bottom, you're going to see the name. Every browser does something like this. It's just a file on the internet. And I can get it pretty easily. I can copy the link location. Wait, was that the CSV? Yeah, the CSV. I'm going to copy link location here. I could just download that and then look at it, look for it on my hard drive like I did with the other stuff, but I want to show you a different one. Kind of handy. So I go to data again, import data, text file, clipboard, or URL. CSV is a text file, just a special kind, and URL. So I'm going to click OK there, and it gets here. I'm going to put like support. This is the support data set. I'll leave this missing indicator the way it is. But this time, internet URL, CSV file, not an Excel file or something. So commas. With text files, you have to tell it how the text files are organized. Commas separate things. Commas. I'm going to click OK. And then a little thingy pops up saying, what's the URL? Well, le paste, control V. There we go. Well, let me resize this. No. That would be crazy. But you can see it. Or if I could just remember that and type it in, I would. So, okay. There we go. Now we have the data. 487 rows and 88 columns. I can do this data set too. There's a lot of stuff going on here. These, this is the support study that I did a while back. I could edit the data set, which is just a different way to look at it. I'm going to recommend you not actually do much editing in here because it behaves strangely. I haven't quite figured out how to do it. I recommend you edit by just going back into Excel, uh, the CSV file or something and messing with it. Anyway, but there it is. It's beautiful. And what variable was I supposed to look at? I was supposed to look at some other variable. It's a crazy variable. Maybe I was supposed to look at um, uh, this. It was just one. There's nothing there. I, don't know, I thought there was. Maybe I was supposed to look at cases. I don't know if one of you has the cases. It's the college academic self-efficacy scale. How would I even know what that means? Well, I would look at the code book, and then if I couldn't figure it out from the code book, I would email Dr. Rogers, and if I hadn't read the code book, he would make fun of me, and then I would know what I mean. Um, wait, am I having crazy times here? 
am I doing too much trying to do open broadcast or recording and not kinds of crazy times? Uh oh. I have freezy times. Hang on. We're gonna kill this sucker. We would kill it, I think. Is there some dialogue box open that I'm not aware of? Oh, the variable editor. I opened something on accident with all my stupid... This is what happened. I opened this, but I was clicking around so I can change the variable name and change it from numeric to character. No. Okay, nothing's broken. I just opened a dialog box on another monitor that I couldn't see. All right, so we're back here. Um, here's my support study. This is the data set that's active right now. I'm going to look at the cases. So the cases variable, which is that questionnaire about academic support for college students. All right, so I want to look at, oh, let's just look at a histogram here, just like the other ones. And let's see, um, cases, there's a lot of stuff here. There it is, histogram. Yeah, that's my Huckleberry right there. That's the one that I'm going to look at for the normal values and the normal approximation and all that stuff. Cause look, that's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And let me look at a box plot. Wait, I've been forgetting one of the kinds of graphs for this assignment. I was supposed to look at a QQ plot. So let me look at cases again. Um, there we go. And there's my, oops, there we go. This is my box plot. This is a very normal looking box plot. Pretty nice. I mean, not perfectly normal, a little skewed. That's beautiful. Now let's look at a QQ plot. Graphs, quantile comparison plot. That's another name for QQ. I don't know why they, there's so many names for everything. So here's my quantile comparison plot dialog box. Dialog box always plops up when you do this, when you do something. Cases, okay. And here's my beautiful QQ plot. That's not too bad. It kind of goes off the rails on the top end a bit there. It then stays in the bounds mostly. It's living on the edge right there. But it's, it's going to be a lot more normal than my others. I should have done QQ plots for the other two variables too. Well, let's say I choose this one. All right. Then I need some statistics for it. Summaries, numerical summaries. Um, numerical summaries. Cases. Where are you? There you are. And here you go. There's my mean, 118.85. Standard deviation, 20.43. And then the IQR, at a score of 104, we have the quartile 1, Q1, and then at a score of 134, we have Q3. Those are very abstract scores. You just add up the points on a questionnaire, so they don't really mean, like, you know, inches or meters or anything like that. The, the metric is very strange. But we can look at those numbers, and then we can use the normal approximation. All right, now if you are still watching, you can stop. I'm done demonstrating uh, our studio or sorry, not our studio, our commander now. If you're still watching, I'll demonstrate how to work with just regular base R, if you like. So I'm going to close our commander. Oh, by the way, um, you should copy this stuff. Hopefully you didn't do too much junk. You would copy that, and then you would paste that into another document, turn it in with your homework. That's your output. So that's the output instead of the SPSS output. And then you would paste the graphs into your, uh, your Google document. So that's what you would do to demonstrate that you used our commander and that you're awesome. All right, I'm going to close this. I'm done. If you want to hang around and see how to do things without our commander, but just using R, which isn't actually that hard, I would show you. Now, normally, normally um, I would use R with a text editor file. So I could start Notepad if I wanted to, but actually R has its own. So you've got this, let's see edit um wait a minute don't you have this one here maybe you don't data editor no miscellaneous packages window all right silly me i forgot i thought you did but i could use notepad or something similar a data a, a text editor not not microsoft word but actual text editor i have notepad too but notepad looks a lot like this because you don't want to have to remember all the things that you type. So I'm going to get some data here. I could say I want to find my data. And 
So whenever you do anything in R, in base R, you have to create objects, and then you deal with those objects. If you ever want to see what your objects are, you do the list command, ls, and all the commands have parentheses. And if it's empty, then it just means the command doesn't need anything. See, we have all those data sets there. I'm going to remove them. Okay, so we can start from scratch. So there's nothing there. ls, and then you get character 0, means you got nothing. There's, there are no objects in your workspace. So I'm gonna get an object. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some data. Now, anytime you do something, I could say like read.csv, and then in quotation marks, the so read.csv is the command to read a CSV file. Shockingly, and I could put in my URL. That has to be spelled right. Oh, it did it. Read it. It dumped all that information here. That's amazing. That happened. That's awesome. So now let's look at what's in my workspace here. Nothing. Because in R, unless you explicitly create something permanent, nothing permanent is created. So we have to do what we call assignment using this little guy right here, left, less than dash. So I'm going to say support. That's the name of a new object I'm going to create. And lots and lots of names will work. Don't put spaces or hyphens, but you can do underscores and periods. Support. And I'm going to put into there. So everything on the right is going to get packed into what, what's over here. So this is going to become support is like a box that I'm going to put this data set into. Actually, Instead of typing that all out, I'm just going to do the up arrow key on my keyboard. And so, and that goes through the commands that you've typed in the past. I'm going to do support with an uppercase S. And that's important because if you type support with a lowercase S, it's not the same thing. You can have an object named uppercase less, uh, S and one named lowercase S, and they're separate objects. So, there we go. I hit enter. Now what do I have? There we go. Edit. Support, so support is now an object. And so now if I use edit support, I can look. I can see what's in the support data set. There we go. I got the data set. Looks familiar because it's just like in our commander. And I can't do anything to like close that window. And it does that. I don't know. Dumps all the stuff on the screen. It doesn't hurt anything, but it's kind of weird. So um, I need to know what the variable names are. So this is, this kind of object is called a data frame. In other words, a data set. And in a data set, you can do a few things with it. You can ask it for its names. You can say names, all in lowercase letters, and then the name of your data set. There we go. Those are all the variable names. Those are the column names in my data set. There are a lot of them. And somewhere in here is the cases. Notice they're all in quotation marks because within R, Text is treated radically differently from numbers. There's cases right there. It's number 53. Not that I need to know that because I can do this. I can see all the values by just doing this. Support. And if you want to refer to a variable inside a data set, you use a dollar sign. And then you have to use correct punctuation and capitalization. Support, dollar sign, cases. There we go. There are all the values. It just scrolled down and dumped them all on my screen for me. How handy. Nothing permanent was created, though. All they did was say, show me the values in cases, just in the simplest way, just dump them all, with apparently five decimal places. So I could do this here, and I could use some commands on this. Like I could say, summary, that's a command. And so if support dollar sign cases, that's those numbers, is in some parentheses, and I do a summary to whatever's in those parentheses, the summary command gives me summary statistics. There you go. Minimum, first quartile, median, mean, max. NA is means missing values. And that will throw a monkey wrench in the work. So if you're doing this and you have a hard time with NAs, uh, let me know. So for instance, if you want to get the mean or the standard deviation, I do my up arrow key again, and that's what brought my command. SD is the command for standard deviation. NA. Why? Because computers don't know how to deal with missing values. You have to tell them explicitly what to do with that. Graphic user systems have some rules built in how to deal with it, but this doesn't assume anything. It says, hey man, I don't know, maybe you're like super guy person doing stats and you know exactly what you want to do. I'm not going to make assumptions. So as it turns out, there's a silly little command. This is just to demonstrate. You'd have to look up and find what this is. na.rm. 
So remove the NAS. It's true. There we go. Now we find out that 20.43 is the standard deviation. Um, but there are some things that don't need it. Like this hist is for a histogram. And histogram. There you go. There's my histogram. And then there's a plot called, oh, there's a command called qqnorm. Gives me my normal probability plot, the kind without all the fun confidence intervals and things like that. So there we go, normal probability plot. There we go, you see it's been pretty good. Um, box plot's a handy one. I'll just do my up arrow, I'll just change this. And there we go, there's my box plot. Let me drag it back up here. All right, there's my box plot. And then in R, of course, there's an infinite number of options for anything, it seems, and you can Google and use help to figure things out. So for box plot, I can do question mark box plot. As long as you know the name of the command, then it will start a browser for you, and or it will start your main browser. And let's see, did that help me? There we go. So in my browser, this is what opened. This is a help file for Boxplot, and it shows you all the stuff you can do. It takes a while to learn how to use this. You don't need to know how to use this, but horizontal equals false. Maybe I want horizontal equals true. Maybe that's what I want out of life. So Boxplot, comma, horizontal equals true. Oh, there we go. Where have you been all my life? Horizontal Boxplot. That sounds dirty, really. But it's not. It's just stats. You can see the negative skew there. It's very nice. What if uh, I wanted to do... So, just as a quick demonstration. You don't have to do this stuff. But what if I wanted to... Color equals... I don't know if you type color or if you just COL. I always just type COL. Equals blue. Oh, there. Now it's, now it's blue. Um, green. There's a couple of hundred recognized names. Firebrick is one of my favorites. You can also use HTML code if you happen to know them. Actually, that's pretty much the same. How did I do that? That was amazing. Um, and then you can add like border equals lime green. There. I'm making crazy box plot times here. You don't need to know this. Anyway, you can use this and save it. You can copy it to a clipboard, whatever. Same as with everything else that you were doing. Same as with our commander. It's not that hard, uh, but I understand if everybody just wants to use our commander or SPSS. That's cool with me. I should probably stop this podcast because it's gone on for a really long time now. Really a long time.